This beautiful college, with its 33 acres of carefully landscaped grounds, has become a major landmark in the city of Pasadena. Carefully preserved old buildings from Pasadena's past and striking modern architecture combine to produce an environment of rare distinction and character. A campus that has been recognized as one of the most beautiful in the world. But Ambassador is far more than beautiful grounds and stately buildings. It is the fulfillment of an idea. The idea that in a world of changing standards and faltering morality, traditional values can still be maintained. While it is important that young people are taught how to earn a living, it is even more important that they are taught how to live. There have never been the commonplace student protests at Ambassador, but the college itself is a protest a protest against the confusion and compromise that is leading our modern society morally adrift. Ambassador's beautiful grounds and elegant buildings reflect something much deeper, the college's motto and its underlying purpose, to recapture true values. At Ambassador, students from the United States and more than 40 foreign countries study, work, and enjoy recreational activities in an environment that encourages personal growth and excellence. Ambassador College opened its doors in the autumn of 1947 when the founder and first chancellor, Herbert W. Armstrong, moved to Pasadena from the Pacific Northwest. Herbert Armstrong had been a successful and innovative advertising executive in the earlier years of this century learning his profession in the energetic, thriving atmosphere of Chicago. But the flash depression of the early 1920s changed the direction of his life. He saw rich and influential people he had known ruined overnight, their reputations destroyed, their goals and dreams shattered. During those critical years, Herbert Armstrong's own business was swept away. In 1924, he moved to the Pacific Northwest, where in late 1926, he was challenged into an intensive study of science, philosophy, and the Bible. In 1931, Herbert Armstrong was ordained a minister. Thus began the work that was to occupy him until his death in January of 1986. In 1934, he first published The Plain Truth magazine, and broadcast the first World Tomorrow program. The magazine and the program offered a challenging view of conditions in the world and a preview of the direction of world events. The magazine's circulation grew steadily. And the radio program's popularity increased until it was broadcast nationwide. After the turmoil and uncertainty of the Second World War, listeners and readers continued to be intrigued and wanted to know more. The efforts of Mr. Armstrong and his wife Loma soon outgrew their small office in Eugene, Oregon, and their ability to handle it themselves. Mr. Armstrong needed not only the help of co-workers, but a trained ministry who could reflect the values he taught. But where would he find them? Mr. Armstrong realized that he had no alternative but to establish a college himself and train his helpers. The teaching of what was then the Radio Church of God was based on the teachings of the Bible. But as Mr. Armstrong later wrote, a specialized Bible instruction alone would not be enough. It must be a liberal arts college offering a general cultural education with biblical and theological training offered as one of several major courses. This realization coincided with another important development. In the early 1940s, Mr. Armstrong was regularly visiting Hollywood to record the World Tomorrow program in modern studios. World peace. Broadcasting technology was more up to date in Southern California than in Oregon. A move to be closer to Hollywood was becoming a necessity, 
And Mr. Armstrong realized that Southern California would also be an ideal place to establish the educational institution he needed. But where in Southern California? Hollywood was hardly the right environment, and the city of Los Angeles was too large. But 20 miles away, at the foot of the San Gabriel Mountains, was a city close to Hollywood broadcasting facilities, and yet with its own particular identity, Pasadena. A relatively quiet city founded in the last century by Midwesterners desiring to escape the harsh Indiana winters, Pasadena attracted thousands of visitors a year to its elegant hotels and ideal climate. The historian and philosopher Albert Hubbard had written in 1914 that Pasadena was a perfect paradise. In all my little journeys, never have I found any place to compare in liveliness, beauty, and delightfulness to that threshold of Eden, Pasadena. Known as the Crown City, Pasadena had become a place of character and dignity. In the 1940s, it had already achieved international fame as host city to the Rose Parade and Tournament of Roses. Pasadena was the ideal choice as a home for Ambassador College. The downtown area was flourishing, but at the western edge of the city was an area of elegant old mansions. These were remnants of another more elegant era, but were now costing too much in upkeep to remain in private hands. After considering several options, Mr. Armstrong leased, with option to purchase, a property near the corner of Orange Grove Avenue and Grove Street. Built by Edward F. Claypool in 1897, the mansion and extended garden estate was built at the crest of a sloping hill that overlooked the city of Pasadena. Photographers in the early 20th century had photographed the Claypool home as a majestic and dignified background to Pasadena. The interior was finely furnished and decorated. The estate's dignity was preserved by later owners after it was sold by Edward Claypool in 1901. This residence became the first home of Ambassador College and the nucleus of the present campus. Today, the property serves as the Ambassador College Library. Ambassador College first made news in Pasadena on July 9, 1947, when the Pasadena Star News reported, the institution to be known as Ambassador College will have as its first objectives character development, self-discipline and culture, and personality development. Herbert W. Armstrong told the paper, we expect to teach students how to think, how to study, how to choose the true values, and how to live them. These true values, the spiritual laws of life, form the true foundation for the beginning of understanding and true education. From that beginning, we shall proceed with the true scientific, the technical, and the materialistic. After several setbacks, Ambassador made its modest start with only four students and eight faculty members in 1947. It was a very small beginning, but enrollment increased steadily, and over the years, other historical properties were added to the campus. A second residence, known as Mayfair, was acquired in 1949. It was built in 1903 for $20,000 by O.S.A. Sprague. Mr. Sprague, a millionaire businessman and philanthropist, had moved to Pasadena from Chicago. Mayfair became the first student center, dining facility, and the men's and women's residence. Today, it serves as a woman's dormitory. In 1897, businessman Louis J. Merritt had moved to Pasadena from Minnesota. In 1905, he built the mansion on Elevado Drive, today known as Del Mar Boulevard. It was modeled after President Theodore Roosevelt's summer White House in New York. This fine building cost a then unbelievable $35,000. It was acquired by Ambassador College in 1956 and today serves as a men's dormitory. Perhaps the most well-known property purchased by the college was the estate of Hewlett C. Merritt, built between 1905 and 1908. When the college acquired the property in 1956, it was in a somewhat rundown condition. 
It was renamed Ambassador Hall. This fine old home was restored and remodeled. And here, the students earned their way through college by working on the renovation. The development of the campus followed two concepts, to preserve and maintain what is best of the past, and to combine and complement it with the genuine advances and innovations of the present. As property became available on the lower campus, the substandard housing there was demolished and modern buildings were added in their place. The striking gymnasium natatorium complex was built in 1964 by the Pasadena-based O.K. Earl Corporation. The fine arts and science hall classroom buildings were completed in 1968 by this same firm. Framing the elegant Ambassador Hall, the complex is known as the Loma D. Armstrong Academic Center in memory of Mr. Armstrong's wife of 49 years. The last of the buildings constructed by the O.K. Earl Corporation was the modern Hall of Administration. Completed in 1969, this four-story building houses the many administrative offices of the college and church. A dedicated landscaping and maintenance team has integrated the separate properties into a harmonious whole. As a result, the campus has received many awards and recognition for its beauty. The last major building to be built was the auditorium. This spectacular building was the fulfillment of the goal Mr. Armstrong had nurtured for years, to provide the campus in Pasadena with a world-class auditorium of exceptional quality and dignity. Designed by the architectural firm of Daniel, Mann, Johnson, and Mendenhall, the auditorium was built of the finest materials available from America and around the world, including the largest installation of rose onyx anywhere on Earth. On April 7, 1974, Maestro Carlo Maria Giolini and the Vienna Symphony Orchestra set the tone for the Performing Arts Series. artists have performed on this stage, including Artur Rubinstein, Vladimir Horowitz, the Berlin and Vienna Philharmonics, soprano Beverly Sills, and tenor Luciano Pavarotti. Ambassador College is well known in Southern California as a place of culture and beauty but it is first and foremost a place of education. And the ambassador story is one about people. Ambassador is a small college. Enrollment is controlled to maintain a good ratio between the faculty and students. Students are accepted for a two-year Associate of Arts or Associate of Science program. Many then continue for a further two years working towards a liberal arts degree. Ambassador strives to provide its students with a balanced program of study and recreation. The liberal arts program offers courses in business administration, communications, history, home economics, language, literature, music, the sciences, and physical education. But Ambassador makes no apologies for the underlying philosophy that is the basis of all true education. That is, that the Word of God is the foundation of all knowledge. Thus, Ambassador has a core program in theology and religion. From the beginning, the college placed great emphasis on developing speaking and communication skills. Years in advertising had taught Herbert Armstrong that it was important for an educated person to be able to express himself or herself clearly. The men's and women's speech clubs complement classroom instruction and give all students experience in real speaking situations. The work-study program has been a feature of the college from the beginning. 
Since the campus serves as world headquarters for the Ambassador Foundation and the Worldwide Church of God, students are given many practical opportunities for employment during their college years. The late founder, Herbert Armstrong, distilled the organizational philosophy into the simple principle of give versus get. He often stressed this to many audiences around the world. Now, the way of get is the way the world is going. It is the way of jealousy and envy toward other people, the way of competition that leads to strife and to violence and to war. The other way of life is the way of give, or perhaps better expressed in the terms of the word love. It is outgoing toward others. It is the way of wanting to help others, wanting to serve, having respect toward others. Prior to his death in January 1986, Herbert Armstrong appointed Joseph Tkach his successor. Just fine as well. Chancellor Tkach has continued with the dynamic goals and objectives of Ambassador of College. The men who are presently in on the By graduation, Ambassador students are prepared to make a useful contribution to society. In his commencement address, Chancellor Tkach reminded these students that the Ambassador education doesn't stop at graduation. So as a college, we are not merely in the education business, just to hand out diplomas. We all have a job to do. And when I say that, I think back over a statement that was made over a century ago by Abraham Lincoln. He who said that he would study to show himself approved, and not if, but when an opportunity would present itself he would be ready. And I believe that you students have already achieved that. You've had the golden opportunity of receiving an education here at Ambassador College. Leaders lead by doing, not by title. You want to be a leader, then be do it. Show it by your actions, not by how many stripes you have on your arm or gold braids on your shoulder or bars, or whatever it might be. Leaders lead by doing, not by title. Yes, today you graduate from Ambassador College, true. But remember, you never leave it. You merely become an extension of it as an ambassador of the way of life that God has opened to us. So you have an awesome responsibility to live up to that way of life that you have now been taught, that you have now embarked on. Many students have an opportunity to put their training to practical use even before graduation. Through the Ambassador Foundation, students have been able to serve in several overseas countries. At the close of 1980, the college began a project in cooperation with the Thai community of Los Angeles, assisting Laotian refugees in camps on the Thai-Laos border to prepare for life in Western countries. In Jordan, college students assist in the education and training of teachers of mentally and physically handicapped children. In other Middle Eastern countries, they participate in archaeological excavations. In Thailand, English is taught in several religious institutions. In Sri Lanka, in the hill town of Nuwara Elia, the college maintains a school to help high school graduates develop business and other work-oriented skills. The name Ambassador was carefully chosen because that is what we seek to be, ambassadors, representatives of a way of life that works. It has been wisely said that it is better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. Our world can sometimes be a dark place with its crime, violence, misery, and poverty. We all wish it were different. But more and more, philosophers and educators are realizing that humanity has lost its way. Forty years ago, Ambassador College lit a lamp in this beautiful crown city of Pasadena at the foot of the San Gabriel Mountains. The light is still burning, 
and we are grateful for the opportunity we have had to shine that light and make a contribution not only to this community, but from it to this nation and to the world. Ambassador College is privileged to share with the people of Pasadena what is still one of the most picturesque cities on earth. We have never regretted that Herbert Armstrong was led to found the college here. In 1986, ambassador students enthusiastically joined the people of Pasadena in celebrating the centennial of our city. We thank you for sharing our 40th anniversary today.